welcome to the show. Our first guest for today, Jenny Winter, is a one-woman wonder show musician and comedian. And next up, we've got a budding actress named Lilani Wyatt who works in LA. Our last guests are Roman Albert, local freestyler, and Michael Monroe Casey, music facilitator and producer. Welcome to the studio, Jenny. Oh, thank it's you so Jenny. much. Yeah. And I get a flower. That makes me special. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Jenny, you've been working on so much lately. You're heading off to LA at the end of this week. How did you become interested in comedy and being a comedian? Well, I think that comedy was interested in me um, from a very <laughs> early age. I think it bites you very early. And I, I, as long as I can remember, you know, I remember trying to make my grandmother who raised me make her laugh to kind of ease the tension of, uh, of you know, hostile family situations and, and so on and becoming the class clown in high school. And then when I left school, I was acting in different productions. And it's funny because I never set out to do comedy, but I kind of always fell into those comedic roles kind of naturally. And then I popped out a couple of kids, as you do, and I <laughs> kind of thought that performing was over for me at that point. And then I saw I was kind of losing my mind, just being stuck at home all the time. And one day I heard about this improv comedy troupe that was looking for players and I thought, oh my gosh, that would be so much fun. And so it was literally just a way to have a night out of the house. And I rang them up and I auditioned and I started performing the following week. And at that point, it was just for dinner and a beer, which was, you know, living the dream. <laughs> and, uh, and then it just kind of snowballed from there. So I kind of accidentally fell into uh, a mm -hmm. comedy career. And your comedy does focus a bit around um, childbirth and female issues and stuff. So you must be drawing inspiration from your kids. Do you draw inspiration from your kids? In oh, your absolutely. Comedy? All yeah. the time. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's a saying which I think is really true, which is that if it's bad for life, it's good for comedy. And mm -hmm. I think that's absolutely true. Like the worst things that happen life-wise make the funniest stories. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm constantly constantly uh yeah taking inspiration from the stuff my kids say <laughs> drawing on the worst things that happen in life. oh yeah and there's so many where to begin it's where do you draw the line yeah and what's actually funny and what's just mm. um my kids being mm. you know being my children and how do you combine music into your one woman show well so my one woman show is a little bit different too because it's the first time that i've really consciously moved away from just doing stand-up Mm. Uh, and musical comedy I've always done in my stand-up, which is more just the funny songs and, uh, mm. yeah, like I have a song about childbirth and I used to do this Australian Idol kind of tribute song and, uh, and, and so on. So I've always had that as part of it. But now this one-woman show I've been working on is really a lot more theatrical. It's got a mm. real storytelling arc and the songs really tell part of the story. So there's a lot yeah. more of a kind of reason to have them in the show. Mm. Uh, a bit more cabaret-esque. I guess mm. you could kind of say. And while there's still stand-up in it, it's more of a stand-up dramedy in that there's uh, happy bits and sad bits as mm. well. So it's a bit more light and shade. Did that sound as artsy-fartsy as I hope it oh, did? It did yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you were involved in the Cabaret Fringe down at the Melbourne Fringe Festival recently. How was that? Yeah, at that, it was the Adelaide Cabaret Fringe, Adelaide. which is like a little Melbourne, so it's nearly, yeah, yeah pretty much the same. Uh, <laughs> it was fantastic. I had the best time. It was uh, very nerve-wracking because it was the debut of the show in Australia. Mm. Uh, I did a work-in-progress version of it in Canada a couple of years ago, and then for various reasons I was in a bad car crash and stuff, so mm. I kind of got sidelined for a while so I've worked on the show so much since then and uh, so debuting it you're always a little bit nervous mm. because you have no sense of how it's going to go down but um, it went beautifully got some really beautiful reviews and yeah. uh, had lovely people come and say nice things afterwards and uh, one person told me afterwards that she was now going to go home and reevaluate her life Oh. So, yeah, and that, I, I hope for the better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll find out. Uh. Yeah, but really great to get that kind of response mm. was um, beautiful. So now I just am on fire. I can't wait to yeah. take it around. I want to take it touring around Australia yeah. and, and beyond. And I know that for you, comedy is very largely about your relationship with the audience, like you're saying. So how do you, play, how do you work on your relationship with the audience when you're doing a show? That's a really good question. Um, I think a lot of it is treating the audience like your friends. Like you've got to treat them like you're, they're your allies because otherwise you're setting yourself up for, you don't want it to become this um, enemy versus me, me versus them or that. Mm. It's a fine line though because you also don't want to need, need too much from them because I think audiences mm. are very smart and they can sense that desperation oh, from a performer yeah. when you're wanting them to 
love you mm. or something. So mm. it's a, yeah, it's a fine line. I guess it's like with any friendship, you know, if you sense that someone needs, is too needy of you, it's not yeah. a very attractive quality and yeah. it kind of turns people off. Okay. But yeah, the other thing I've realised though too is, um, being truthful, like with the, like responding to the truth of what's happened. Like if mm. um, a loud bang happens in the room, actually addressing that and yeah. not pretending yeah. that it didn't happen yeah. uh, in a stand-up context, I think is great. And also gives you the impetus to show, like they're the kind of magical moments that get you, allow you to shine when you're actually able to improvise based on something that's just happened um, in the room. I think yeah. that just should have I don't know, it let, lets you shine if you, yeah, address it for what it is rather yeah. than it, pretending it didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know what you mean. And you've been um, involved at Woodford Folk Festival too. Can you tell me a little bit about what you've... What you did that? I have. Well, I have loved Woodford. We have a long going love affair. Uh, I loved it as a, as a, from a distance and as a um, participant and just watching and being an audience mm -hmm. member for many years. And then I had the very good fortune of being asked to perform on the comedy stage. They have a fantastic comedy stage there every year that moves around. And that has just been one of the great joys of my life. I love doing Woodford mm -hmm. because they kind of encourage you to do a different, um, comedy set every single night so every night's mm. going to be different which is different from doing it in a comedy club where you would usually do the same set mm. or more or less uh, each night but yeah I find the audiences there really great and very um, savvy and intelligent like they're very supportive but they won't put up with any crap either uh, so just beautiful and last year was such a highlight was um, Steady Eddie was highlighted uh, had the headlining and at the end of it, he invited me up on stage to play um, keys while he did this blues, this Woodford blues yes. that he'd written. And it was such a joy. And I said to him, are you sure you want me to do this? Like, I haven't rehearsed this at all. And he went, who cares? He's like, you've got to do it. It's Woodford. <laughs> so it's those kind of yeah. magical, yeah, little moments. Yeah. Anything can happen. They just happen momentarily out of nothing. Beautiful. So what do you think is the major difference, or what are the major differences between an improv performance and something that's well rehearsed? Oh, you. interesting. Well, there's there's a lot of differences. I think with improv, the expectation's different as well. Like the audience, it, it's like watching somebody do like a high wire circus act. You know, there's an element mm. of danger there mm. that this might this might work beautifully, this might be successful, but there's a chance it's going to fall flat on its face. Yeah. Uh, so I think that adds an element of excitement and also forgiveness, like that the audience, you know, they don't, if you've rehearsed something so well, they kind of really expect that you're going to be funny and you should be funny because you've mm. had the chance to get it ready. Whereas with improv, if it, even if it fails, I think there's an element of, oh, well, you know, you were making it up on the spot. Um, mm. But again, I think it's how you react to that failure too that gives the audience their cue. Like if you look mm. like that, oh, that sucked and I hate myself, I think then the audience really picks up on that and goes, oh, wow, that really did suck. Yeah. Oh, I feel bad now. Mm. Whereas if you just like take it with joy and... Um, you know, oh, well, I failed, but hey, that was fun. <laughs> then I think they're with you. They're yeah, on your side. I totally yeah. agree with you there. It's been lovely having you in the studio. We've just run out of time. But Thank Jenny, you so all the much. best with your trips to LA at the end of the week and everything to come in the future. I can't wait to see. Thank you so yeah, much. Thanks. We'll be back shortly after the break with Lilani Wyatt, actress from LA.